Hello Traveller and welcome to part 2 of 3 for the Invocation Academy review session for version 4.7. In case you missed it, make sure to check out part 1 where I went over the balance changes and all 14 of the new action cards along with my initial impressions. In particular, I went over 4 of the cards that synergize with the new discard mechanic that features on some of the characters, so if you're not sure what that is, make sure to go back and watch towards the end of part 1 where I went over them in depth. But it's time to get going with our 9 new character cards. Of course, that's too many to do at once, so today we're going to look at the 5 new playable characters and leave the 4 monsters for part 3. So without further ado, let's bring our first character on stage, Xin Yan. We'll start with Xin Yan's talent which uses her normal attack, and while equipped, anytime she uses any skill with 0 or 1 card in hand, she deals plus 2 damage once around. Of course, this is meant to synergize with the discard in the rest of her kit, but since you only get the bonus once around and you are forced to use her normal attack here and not her elemental skill, it's not particularly good and probably not required in Xin Yan decks. There could be some synergy here with Yunjin, but mostly the talent probably isn't worth playing. Xin Yan's skill deals 2 pyro damage and causes you to discard 1 card with the highest cost from your hand. Then she creates a 2 point shield for your team. Her burst costs 3 pyro and 2 energy and deals 3 physical damage and 2 piercing damage to all off field characters. Then it does a flashy thing and discards your entire hand. Finally, the burst leaves behind a status which deals 1 pyro damage when you also have 0 or 1 cards in hand when you end your turn. Well, it's pretty obvious that Xin Yan's kit revolves heavily around the discard mechanic, trying to get your hand down to 0 or 1 card so that she can benefit from her talent or the burst status. While her skill is pretty efficient, it's not enough to offset the downside of having to discard cards from your hand, and her burst does deal a lot of damage, but again, not enough to offset having to discard your entire hand if you're not gaining value. So what that means is you can't throw Xin Yan in any old deck, instead she pretty much has to be played alongside one of the other discard synergy characters, namely Narwhal and Apep. We'll be getting to those characters in depth in part 3 of the review, so stay tuned until then. With most other characters, discarding a card is almost too high of a cost to pay for her skill, even if it's something valuable like Countdown to the Show. If you are playing Xin Yang, you also definitely want to include cards like Central Laboratory Ruins to benefit more from discard, and probably Kusaba to go with the other cards that you're playing. One deck that I've liked is Xin Yang Seahorse Apep. Now, just to explain Apep a little bit, at the start of the game he will shuffle 6 cards into your deck that you want to draw and hopefully discard for value. When you discard one of these cards, it's the same as if you were to play it, basically giving a free summon and building towards Apep's ultimate form. Of course, Xinyan's skill here, along with cards like Kusava, is the perfect way to get those discards going. But to do that, you have to find those cards first. So the deck has a lot of card draw naturally, but then plays Seahorse to draw even more cards, and it's kind of a mid-range deck since you have a lot of healing and shield, so everything combines nicely. Then, once you've played or discarded 4 of Apep's summons, that's when it ultimates and gains plus 3 damage to all of its skills, and then you can just finish your opponents off pretty quickly. Alright, thank you Xinyan. Let's welcome our next performer, Yunjin. Yunjin's main mechanic revolves around the Flying Cloud Flag Formation status. While active, when a character uses a normal attack, they deal plus 1 damage. Additionally, while you have 0 or 1 cards in hand, that attack also costs 1 less elemental die. In total, you can stack up to 4 of these at once. And both of Yunjin's skills will generate this status. Her skill is a prepare skill granting 2 temporary shields, then following up to deal 2 geo damage. But if you have tuned or discarded a card already this round, gets to do a 1 additional bonus damage. This provides 1 stack of her formation status. Yunjin's burst costs 3 geo and 2 energy, deals just 2 geo damage, but provides 3 stacks of her formation status. Her talent card uses her burst, and while it's equipped, her formation status will add an extra plus 2 damage if you have exactly 0 cards in hand. Note that this is an addition to the plus 1 you already get for a total of plus 3. Yunjin's talent is extremely scary, as you'll notice, there's no limit to how many times you can trigger the plus 2 damage. As long as you have any formation stacks remaining and no cards in hand, you're doing plus 2 3 damage in addition to the 1 dice discount on every normal attack. This is an insane bonus and one of the highest value talents we've ever seen, perhaps enough to rival Bennett's talent. If you are playing Yunjin, you'll definitely want to run the talent in your deck and make sure to play a deck that can easily get down to 0 cards as needed. Do note though that Yunjin does need to stay alive for this bonus to apply, so you're not able to just burst and then sacrifice her like you could with Bennett's talent. 
Okay, out of all the characters, Yunjin is easily the new character with the most potential to break the game. If you remember pre-nerf Ito, a plus three damage bonus with a one dice discount is basically how his burst works. So she basically has the potential to turn any character into Ito. But it's even better because if you remember, I said it discounts the elemental die. That's right, I didn't misspeak there. It's not the unaligned cost. Normally there's a huge risk to being down at zero cards because if you roll poorly, you may not be able to attack, but you can always normal attack on a character because you only need unaligned die. Combine this with minty meat rolls, and now you have one unaligned normals doing plus three damage each hit. There is an even crazier interaction to be aware of with Nouvellette. This one is pretty weird and there's the potential for it to get patched, but the way it works is as long as you have formation stacks, Yunjin with the talent buffs all normal attack damage by plus three, regardless of whether you actually use that stack or not. The way it works with Nouvellette is if you have a source water droplet, you use up a formation status on the initial normal attack, but the follow-up doesn't consume a stack, but still gets to benefit from the damage bonus. This means with a single prepare skill, your Nouvellette is doing four damage plus six on the follow-up with just two unaligned dice when you combine it with Yunjin talent. This is insane. I have to imagine this is a massive oversight, and if there's gonna be another emergency hotfix mid-patch, this might be it. Nouvellet aside though, there are just so many characters that you can now combo with Yunjin for massive damage. Furthermore, she can just equip herself and just chain normals into a second follow-up burst if you want to. She's just that good. Really, feel free to go build your own deck. All you need to do is combine Yunjin with any character with a normal attack. Infusion characters like Ayato or Yoimiya or Hu Tao can work pretty well. If you want something fun and maybe a little less broken, you can try Yunjin, Hu Tao, Zhongli. First, the whole team here are spear users, so you can make great use of weapons like Moonpiercer. We also have Primordial Jade Wing Spear, as is incredible to ramp up your normal attacks to 8 damage per hit. With 3 Liyue characters, we also play Lithic Spear to give our shield value as well. While it seems really weird to have Zhongli in an aggro combo deck, Yunjin is just that good and doesn't need much help. This deck is pretty much guaranteed to never lose into a stall deck. Really though, it's hard to go wrong with Yunjin, so go out there, try her out yourself, as she's definitely got the highest potential out of all the new characters. Alright, that's enough time in the spotlight, Yunjin. The show must go on. Time to look at Farina. Farina has two states, one for Usia, which she starts in, and one for Numa. At the start of the match, she'll create a card in your hand that lets you switch modes on demand, and once per round, if you don't have one in your hand when you use a normal attack, it creates a new one. Her skill creates a summon that has two different effects based on her Aka alignment. In her starting Usia state, the summon deals one Hydro damage at the end of the round, and then if you have a character with six or more HP on your team, then the character that's taken the least damage is dealt one piercing damage, and the summon gets to deal an additional Hydro damage. Unlike similar effects on other characters, this additional hit doesn't consume an extra usage, so you can get up to two Hydro hits for each one. In the Numa state, the summon instead heals your entire team for 1 HP. Then, if you have a character with 5 or less HP, then whichever character that's taken the most damage is healed for 1 HP. If you use a skill again while either summon is active, you'll simply add 2 usages up to a max of 4. And whenever Farina changes state when you use her card, the summon will automatically change as well, allowing you to swap between the two effects at will. Her talent uses her skill, and while equipped, whenever she uses her skill, it applies a status that infuses her next normal attack with Hydro, and then adds a different effect based on her state. In Usia, she heals the other standby characters for 1 HP, while in Numa, she deals plus 2 damage, but deals 1 piercing damage again to the character that's taken the least damage. Keep in mind, the effect here is opposite to that of her summons. If her summons are in damage mode, then the attack heals, and if your summon is healing, then your attack does damage. Don't get it mixed up. Since Verena's skill doesn't actually deal Hydro damage on hit, having her talent can actually be quite a nice way to give her Hydro application on demand. Most of the time, you will prefer just to use her skill, but with the talent equipped, the normals get pretty good value, so I would recommend running it with Farina. Her burst costs 4 Hydro and 2 Energy, deals 2 Hydro damage, and then applies a team status that is active for 2 rounds. Then, as long as this status is active, anytime your active character takes damage or is healed, it will start stacking a separate Revelry status. While you have stacks of this remaining, any damage that you deal will use up 1 usage and add plus 1 damage. Note that this doesn't buff any single hit by a huge amount. Any individual hit is at most plus one, but will repeatedly trigger for anything that does multiple hits. The best way to think about it is it's pretty similar to Sucrose's talent when it absorbs an element, but applies to every type of damage. 
One other thing to keep in mind, after the burst runs out, any revelry stacks you've already obtained won't actually run out. You'll get to keep them and continue using them to buff damage. First off, the fact that Furina gives you an extra card in hand at the beginning of the game is actually really nice in general, being an extra card to tune in a pinch. Her skill is also extremely strong. The damage form in particular has the potential for 4 Hydro applications, which is the highest value out of any single summon that we've seen. Even if it does deal damage to your own team, it's well worth the trade for those extra hits. One thing to keep in mind, that this synergizes perfectly with her burst as well. Each individual hit can benefit from revelries plus 1 damage, meaning with the burst active, you can be doing 4 damage with that summon on end phase. The healing form is pretty nice as well, though overall I do think it's a little worse than Barbara. It's a pretty big downside to not have that initial hydro hit as well as the cleanse. So for pure stall strategies, Barbara is still probably better, but Farina does have added flexibility by being able to swap between the two states. Okay, how good is Farina's burst then? Well, the best way to think about it is to compare it to Bennett Burst. Both cost 4 and deal 2 damage on hit. However, in terms of damage and healing, Bennett's burst does gain value a lot quicker than Farina's burst. While it sounds really good to be gaining a stack every time you take damage or are healed, in most cases it's probably not doing as much as you might like. Of course, if you have characters like Nouvellet that heal and deal damage to themselves multiple times, or if you're using cards like Fontaine Resonance that can also trigger multiple times, then you can get quite a bit of added value. Overall though, if you're playing Farina in an aggressive deck, generally you'd probably want to stay away from the burst because it's simply too slow at dealing damage. Her kit is very much centered around her skill, and that's where much of her strength lies. If you want to try her in a slower deck, why not go with Farina Nuvelet Layla? This plays very similarly to the Barbara version, just swapping her out for Farina, but lets us play Fontaine Resonance, which ends up working really well with her new sword, Splendor of Tranquil Waters. In case you missed the card mechanics in part 1, Fontaine Resonance actually causes you to both heal and take damage when you get set to a target HP, then heals 1, which means you can get 6 stacks for the sword in just one card. For something a little more aggressive, why not try Farina, Sara, Linny? This deck plays kind of similar to the old Electro Charge deck with Fischl and Mona and Nahida, except this time we start on Farina, use her skill, then go to Sara, skill twice on her before finishing on Linny. With two bow characters as well, both are great holders of King Squire to add even more damage. With your opening, Farina's double Hydro applications work really well with Sara, as you're very often going to get two Electro Charge reactions right away, and then setting up Sara to buff herself with the follow-up hit. If you like though, you can replace Sara with Fischl if you just want a longer duration summon. Alright, give a big hand to our performers tonight, and a big fist to our new character, Risley. His skill deals 2 cryo damage and gives Risley a 2 use buff that works on his normal attacks, causing them to deal plus 1 damage, then changing effects based on his current health. At 6 or more HP, it discounts them by 1 cryo, but causes 1 piercing damage to himself. At 5 or less, you get 2 healing, but no discount. Risley's talent uses his normal attack and while equipped, whenever he takes damage or is healed, even while off field, gains a point then he can consume 3 points to give plus 1 damage to any skill, not just his normal attacks. Obviously, this is made to synergize with his attack status, but that combo does only net you 2 stacks naturally, otherwise you do have to rely on your opponents hitting you. But that's a lot of work for just plus 1 damage, where there's a lot of talents that add up to plus 2. The main strength here is that it does work off field, so if you can build stacks with healing or damage that way, it can be pretty nice. But overall, I think it's a little bit too much work for not a very good buff, so I'd probably skip playing the talent. His burst is very interesting, costs 3 cryo and 3 energy, deals 2 damage with a 2 damage follow up before you choose your next action. So basically your opponent gets a chance to act first. Notably, if Risley has taken damage or has been healed twice this round, it costs 1 less die. This can also stack up to 2 times, so if it's happened 4 times total, then the burst only costs 1 cryo. Risley's kit is pretty straightforward. Use skill once, then normal attack twice, then go for his burst. By normal attacking twice, you're guaranteed at least one dice discount. So while his burst sounds really underwhelming at 3 energy and 3 cost, doing only 4 total damage, the trick here is naturally building up to his burst will cause you to take damage or heal at least twice, meaning it pretty much always costs 2 and sometimes 1. In most cases for his normal attack, being at 6 or more HP is ideal, as the cost reduction generally is better than the healing, although both are pretty decent value. Provided you haven't taken any damage, the combination of skill, 
attack, attack, and burst should cost you just a total of 9 dice and do a total of 10 damage. Now, this by itself doesn't sound very good, but kind of like Nuvalet, Risley does benefit a lot from having a weapon equipped as he does a lot of small individual hits. And honestly, thinking of him like a Cryo Nuvalet isn't too far off, but overall he is a little less dice efficient, but gives you a little bit more flexibility in playstyle since you don't have to play around his prepare skill. So if you ever thought to yourself, man, I wish I had a Cryo Nuvalet, then Risley fits that role really well. A simple deck you can try is Risley, Mona, Wanderer. Normally you've seen Eula in this third slot, but the good thing about this team is you have three Catalyst users, so we no longer need to play the Wagner Weapon Banner and miss on the Catalyst some of the time. Instead, you can run the package of Fruit of Fulfillment, Thousand Floating Dreams, and Too Late Tullers, always able to equip Wanderer in round two, and then perhaps having one for Risley in round three as well. But this does end up feeling a little more like a Wanderer deck than a Risley deck. So if you want something more focused on Risley himself, one deck that I've been having a lot of fun with is Risley Mona Kazaha. This is a pretty fun freeze team, allowing you to swirl Hydro on Kazaha and setting up into Risley right away. It is very important though, you do put Risley to the right of Kazaha so he's active when that happens. In round two, you have a lot of potential to threaten a lot of the opponent's characters with freeze, and in certain situations, a quick swap onto Kazuha can let you perform a full freeze on the enemy team. And to close us out, saving perhaps the best for last, Kabe. Kabe's skill deals two dendro damage and gives him a burst scan status, which is his main mechanic. Note that he can only stack up to a max of three of these. Then anytime you have a dendro core on your side while you have the burst scan active, you consume one stack along with the core. With this, you discard the top card of your deck and then deal dendro damage equal to that cost plus one. So for example, if he discarded a bestest, it deals three dendro damage. His talent uses his skill, and while equipped, when you discard a card using burst scan from your deck, you will gain a copy of that card in your hand, which effectively just means you drew a card. Additionally, if that card happened to be a location, then the next location you play costs two less. So basically, this is a draw talent, and it's pretty decent since you're most likely going to be triggering burst scans for damage anyway if you're playing Kabe. The fact that his talent costs 3 is also kind of nice, because it then becomes a pretty good card to just get off a burst scan anyway, dealing 4 dendro damage. Now, the location part is really funny, but it's probably just more of a meme. The talent overall is not amazing, but there's kind of no downside to playing it in a Kabe deck, so you might as well run it. His burst costs 3 dendro and 2 energy, deals 3 dendro damage, and adds 2 burst scan statuses to Kabe. He also gains an infusion for 2 rounds that give his normal attacks plus 1 damage and converts them to dendro. Additionally, each attack creates 1 more burst scan status. Again, keep in mind you can only get up to a max of 3. Okay, there's quite a few things to say about Kabe. First, he's the only character that can discard from your deck and not from your hand, which is very different. Importantly, discarding from your deck doesn't cause you to go down a card, so there is no downside to doing this. But you still get beneficial synergies like Laboratory or Narwhal. One particularly cool combo is with Countdown to the Show 3. If Countdown happens to be at the top of your deck when you trigger the burst scan, it immediately adds the new copy back on top of the deck. So if you can trigger the burst scan again, you can repeatedly guarantee discounting Countdown. And since it's from your deck, you're getting its full value when you play it to draw plus four cards. Now, of course, you will have to set it up on top of your deck first with a discard or just get pretty lucky, but it's pretty worth it to play Kame decks just for this reason. Secondly, well, Kame is our first source of random damage, but people kind of quickly figured out that if you just fill your deck with three cost cards, then it's not random anymore and you're guaranteed to do four dendro damage with each burst scan, which turns your skill into a huge damage cannon. In fact, there's a very important breakpoint here when you combine it with a summon like Mona or Farina. With their one initial hydro damage, with three damage from Kame's skill triggering Bloom follow-up, then a 4 damage guaranteed hit from Burst Scan reapplying Dendro leads to a final 2 damage of Bloom from Hydro. This perfectly adds up to 10 damage, allowing you to easily take out any character with just 2 skills and no additional help. Even better, this leaves you an additional core into the next round when you skill again, most likely doing another 2 plus 4 damage. Kabe is certainly an aggro character, and he's a little bit one-trick, but is probably one of the most efficient characters at doing just damage. Of course, if you are building just a regular deck, you will have to rely on the RNG damage a little bit. You want to try and avoid zero cost if possible, and play more two and three cost cards. If you are trying to build your own Kabe deck, make sure to run him with two Hydro characters, as he already has a ton of Dendro application already, and you're really going to be missing that Hydro. 
Even if Kave goes down, any burst scan statuses you've stacked still remain. So provided there's a dendro aura left on your opponent's side, then any hydro attack will trigger bloom, get used up by the burst scan, and then reapply dendro immediately, letting you repeat this process as needed. If you want to play Kave, I highly recommend Kave Farina Narwhal. Not only is it one of the most unconventional decks ever built, but also unironically strong. If you want an explanation of how the deck works along with some gameplay, I recently featured it in Duelist Theta, so make sure to check out that video. And that is it for our five character cards. Overall, I really like what they did with this set of characters. Most of them have very unique identities and have led to a lot of interesting deck choices. I hope you're ready for even more when we get to the monsters in the next part. One thing I do want to reiterate though, I'm super worried about what Yunjin is going to do to the meta because in her current state, she's honestly pretty broken. The early decks aren't quite optimized yet, but people are already starting to figure out how you can do insane one turn kills as early as round two. While I'm pretty glad that Geo as an element may be back in the meta, Yunjin's kind of not the way to go about it. But I guess we'll see how things land in a week or two. Until then, hopefully you've got some great ideas now to go with for those five characters and I'll see you at the next one for the monster cards. If you are a newer player, be sure to attend the TCG 101 series to level up your Genius Invocation game. If there's anything you'd like to see in an upcoming video, drop a comment and I'll see how I can help. Be sure to enroll in our courses by subscribing so you can be notified when a new lesson is available. Until then, class dismissed!